Before we get into today's show, if the Browns lose on Monday night tonight against the Cincinnati Bengals, should they trade Kareem Hunt? If they fall to two and six, at that point, is it time to just start raising the white flag and somewhat punt on this year for at least for Kareem Hunt? Let me know what you think in the comments. Why for yes or N for no? With a loss tonight, should the Browns trade Kareem Hunt? What's going on, Browns fans? Welcome in to the Cleveland Browns Report. Happy Halloween to all of you guys watching. Happy birthday to my mom. But we're going to talk about Kareem Hunt possibly going to Miami. So I saw this all over Twitter today. You might as well of a possible connection between Kareem Hunt and Tyreek Hill of the Miami Dolphins. So let's start things off by posting this right now on the screen, which is an Instagram post. From Tariq Hill, where he says, I miss my bro, man. And there's a picture of Hill and Hunt. Of course, you remember, they overlapped back in Kansas City. And he tagged Kareem Hunt. At which point, Kareem Hunt then took a screenshot and replied with this. Saying, miss you too, bro. And at the bottom, that's what everyone is uh, doing the big eyeballs emojis for right now. It's a song called Perfect Timing by Lil Baby. Perfect timing, huh? Wonder that timing is referring to the NFL trade deadline. Listen, in 2022, athletes know that people like me, you, media members, take stuff like this and stretch it a mile and make stuff, make stuff out of nothing, right? I think he's probably just stirring the pot a little bit. I really don't believe a Kareem Hunt trade to Miami will go down because of an Instagram post by Kareem Hunt. I, I don't think that's going to be something Andrew Barry goes, well, damn, I didn't know Hunt wanted to be a Tyree kill. I guess we got to do the trade then. Let's make it happen. No, but I do think there is legs to Kareem Hunt maybe going to Miami, not because of he wants to be reunited with Tyree kill, but because the Dolphins are really bad at rushing the football. And Kareem Hunt this season, while granted has not been the 2017 Kareem Hunt or 2020 Kareem Hunt, but he has still been a very valuable member of this offense. 263 rushing yards and four touchdowns to go along with it. As for the Dolphins, what I talked about a moment ago, they have not had success rushing the football, which is something that new head coach Mike McDaniel wants to do. Remember, he came from Shanahan and the 49ers, where they make running the football fun in a time when no one wants to actually run the football. And so for McDaniel, wouldn't be shocked if he decides Raheem Mostert, he's not getting the job done. Chase Edmonds was my starting running back to begin this season. I benched him. And Tua, my quarterback, is our third leading rusher. Now here's what's interesting. When we look at this trade idea I came up with, remember that the reports came out saying the Browns would trade Kareem Hunt possibly for a fourth rounder? Well, Miami doesn't have a fourth rounder. So what about a fifth and a future six? I'm not too inclined to trade Kareem Hunt just for the sake of trading Kareem Hunt. I don't like what that does to this locker room and this team of sending a message of we're just going to start trading players because, not because we want, we're getting what we believe they are worth in return here. Now, would you do this Hunt trade? I think I'm leaning towards D for decline just because I want a fourth round pick for Kareem Hunt. And I get it, fourth round picks aren't super sexy and enticing, but good GMs can do some damage with a fourth rounder. Not miss on like picks like Tommy Togiai, for example. But you could trade a fourth rounder for a player like Amari Cooper. It only cost the Browns a fifth to get Coop. Now, at the end of the day, I'm okay with keeping Kareem Hunt if he gets more involved in the game plan. And they get a win on Monday night. And a win tonight against the Bengals would do wonders for this team going into the bye. Because the AFC North currently looks like this. The Ravens unfortunately pulled out a win against the Bucks on Thursday night. Had they lost, oh baby. I mean, I would have gone Lee Corso mode. Give me that head. But 5-3 and three, uh, Baltimore. They've got a decent leg up. The Bengals at 4-3 and three and the Browns at 2-5 and five play tonight, of course. The Steelers, count them out. It's really a three-team race for the top of this division that no one really wants to come out and win. 
Every team keeps trying to get in their own way. So if the Browns win tonight, improve to 3-5, and five, go into the bye, and have Miami, and how funny would that be if they trade a hunt to Miami then played them. But still, 3-5, and 4-4 four and four Bengals, 5-3 and three bang, uh, Ravens, and you get to play Baltimore and Cincinnati one more time with Deshaun Watson. Andrew Barry's going to think long and hard about selling pieces if he is that close to being at the top of this division. Now, speaking of Browns, Bengals, another watch party tonight here at the channel. So when the game kicks off and you go on YouTube, click on this thumbnail, and I guarantee you're going to have a good time. Even if you are able to watch the game on ESPN, just have us on your phone, your computer, or your tablet. Be a part of the game on your TV and the community going on right here at the watch party. It's a guaranteed blast. So make sure you visit us tonight for our Browns Bengals watch party. I, I saw this tweet from a former Browns fan who handed in his fandom card, which is the most beta thing ever. But Brent Zobleski tweeting out, absolutely no reason for Cleveland to hold on to Kareem Hunt beyond trade deadline. He already held in during camp wants a new deal that he's not going to get from the Browns. Last year of current contract, not playing as well. Team has league's deepest backfield. Get what you can. I don't think he's really off base with a lot of these takes here. And I'll extrapolate more in just a moment. But I got to tell you guys watching about BetUS. So today's sportsbook partner has another awesome deal for Cleveland Browns fans. When you go to chatsports.com slash bet, use promo code Browns125, they will get you a 125% deposit bonus. Here's what's awesome. Tonight, the BetUS odds for Monday night, Bengals-Browns. They've got the Bengals favored three and a half points. Producer Nick Roloff, Kevin Stefanski has played the Cincinnati Bengals four times in his career. Do you know what his record is against the Bengals? 4-0, baby. The Battle of Ohio has belonged to Cleveland Seven of the last eight matchups. I'm riding with the Brownies. Chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Browns125. If you're riding with them too, make your picks right there. So going back to what we talked about a little earlier in the video and now basing off of that tweet of if the Browns aren't going to use Kareem Hunt, what are we waiting around for? And I don't think that's a really off-base take. Look at the last two weeks. Nine carries in two games. He had one touchdown, a goal line plunge. But remember the Patriots game? When he got the ball two straight times, and they dropped him for a loss of three and four yards. Kareem Hunt the last two weeks has not been a big feature of this offense. And if he's just going to get four to five carries a game, then at some point you got to wonder, is a draft pick plus Dearness Johnson or Jerome Ford greater than Kareem Hunt's Five carries a game. Now, Stefanski owned up and said, we got to get him involved more. But if they're not going to, then what's the point? When you look at this depth chart here, it is indeed the deepest running back room in the NFL. I mean, you could just have Nick Chubb, and it would be one of the best running, backs room, running back rooms in the NFL because it's Nick Chubb. But Chubb plus Johnson plus a pick? Tell me that's not enticing. That's all I'm saying. And listen, I love Kareem Hunt. I wanted to keep him in Cleveland all season long. But if this team's going to sit at 2-5 and five and only give him the rock nine times in two weeks, then my mind's going to change on the matter. Now, Johnson has not been a factor this much uh, so far this season. He's mostly just been a special teamer. But Jerome Ford, he's going to be coming off IR hopefully soon after the bye. Remember, he got on IR after the Falcons game, minimum of four weeks, Game number four is tonight against Cincinnati. Add in an extra week, week of rest with the bye coming up. He could be good, good to go for the Dolphins game. And Ford was great in the preseason. So that's all I'm saying. If you want to give Kareem Hunt the ball more than four to five times a game, then I'm all for keeping him. But if his role has been diminished to four to five carries a game, let those four to five carries go to Jerome Ford or Dearness Johnson and get an extra draft pick when you don't have a first rounder next year. That's my TED Talk. I appreciate all of you guys for joining today's show, clicking on to it. I'm going to sign off for now, but I'm going to see you guys tonight for our Browns watch party against the Bengals. Kevin Stefanski will improve to 5-0 against Cincinnati, and the Browns are going to be 3-5. and five.